Okay. <laughs> Same page. Yep. Okay, let's learn a lot. I like that idea. I don't think we discussed a wheelchair, right? No. We didn't no. discuss a wheelchair. Um, like push okay. the wheelchair right on the way discuss it. Right. Maybe okay. you just brought it up. You brought it up. Is it the yep. pushing wheelchair or is it the rolling yourself in a wheelchair? Right. Okay. So rolling yourself in a wheelchair is not an issue. Okay. Because it's like a pair of shoes. Someone else rolling the wheelchair that's carrying. Um now the person himself can roll himself in a wheelchair, but but then when it comes to going into the house, then he's the person himself. I'm sorry, the person himself is no problem. Right? You know, it's technically if he could roll himself in and out of the house, there's no problem. It's not for carrying. So, but the, the practical issue is that you so for another person to push the wheelchair is an issue. So for the person himself to roll himself while he's outside, he could do it. But how does he get into the house? Usually you need someone else to do it. It doesn't work. You can't do that yourself. So then it becomes an issue. So that's so that's something that you're not allowed to do. And you have a can you have a guy do it? Can you have a non do it? It depends on the situation. Like anything else, could you ask a non to do malacha for you? Depends how urgent it is, how important it is. Generally, you can't ask a non Jew to carry on Shabbos for you. So, so in simple words, the, the issue of a person, a person wheeling himself in a wheelchair himself doesn't really usually work because for him to do it outside is okay, but how is he getting in and out? A Jew can't do it, and to ask a non Jew is also not so simple unless in extreme situations where you just, there's a leniency to ask a non Jew. That has to be discussed with it all when the, when the issue comes up. There's so many different situations why it's important, he needs to go, he needs to, he's going to feel whatever. There, there could be so many different situations. Okay, so did we discuss, we discussed if a toddler does not, does not want to walk in Shabbos. I think we discussed that. Yes. Didn't we? We did discuss that. Huh? That was last year. Last week, year? Yeah, last year, no, no. I remember we talked about it last year. But I don't, I don't no, 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 no. Every year we're doing everything okay. again. <laughs> last class we discussed if a toddler doesn't want to walk in Chavez. No, we <laughs> no. didn't discuss it. Oh, we, yeah, 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 we did. We did discuss we it. Did. I thought we discussed it. Yeah. yeah. If a toddler does not want to walk in Chavez, we discussed that. Yeah. You could pass it from one person to the next. Okay. Now, what, do we, what happens if you are walking on Chavez and you realize that you're carrying? So what do you do? So there are situations where we're going to tell you to just continue walking. First thing is you don't stop. We, we started to discuss it. We did start to discuss it. Yeah, we said if you stop all of a sudden, it's like tr stopping in the middle of a highway, you know, slamming your brakes. Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't stop. You continue walking. Now, what do you do? Do you walk back to where you came from? Or... Another method would be where you would, while you're carrying, take the object that you're carrying that's in your pocket and throw it in a backhanded way. These, there are two methods, and depending on the situation, sometimes you do one method, sometimes the other method. That's what we're going to discuss. Sometimes we're going to tell you, just don't, just continue walking. Okay, we always continue walking, yeah, but continue walking and walk back to where you came from. Or sometimes we'll tell you continue walking and just walk to where you're going to. We'll tell you also sometimes do that. Sometimes we're going to tell you uh, continue walking, and while you're walking, take the item out of your pocket and uh, and throw it and throw it behind in a back. You know, you know. In other words, you're going to put it down, not in a regular way, depending on what's going on. Now, so I'm going to tell you in what situation you do what. But first, I want you to understand what's behind it. When you understand what's behind it, it's easy to remember, it's easy to understand what's going on. So we did discuss the malachas. So we're going to discuss it briefly again. There's a few different malachas. There's a malacha called 
within carrying, the general malach of carrying is called hitzah, carrying out, we should call it hitzah. But more specifically, there's hitzah and this hach, could you read this? The hitzah means carrying out, hachnasa means carrying inside, hachnasa means to bring in. Yeah? Machis, hachnasa means to bring Hachnos, very good. Hachnos means bring. So and you remember, Hachnos means you bring guest to house. So Hachnos means we bring inside, so means you're carrying out. It's two separate malachas, they're both primitive. You don't only know what you can't carry, it's two malachas. If I take an object, take this chitas, and I walk out the door, and I walk outside, put it down, that's called hitzo. Then there's a Hachnos. If I'm outside, I pick it up and I bring it inside and I put it down. That's called a chnos. And then there is Maimir Dalad Amis. Then there is Maimir it's a separate prohibition. You cannot carry in a public domain. It means that in a public domain, I pick something up, I pick something up, and I walk with it four cubits, about six feet, and then I put it down, or I stop. The same thing is if I stop, I transgress. I completed the malacha. And every malacha, whichever one it is, whether it is a tsa or a or carrying four cubits upon the domain, there's two parts to the malacha. There's the akira. Akira means to uproot. And then there's hanacha, putting down. In order to complete the malacha, to consider you transgressed, min biblically, you have to do akira, which means I'm picking it up, I'm walking into the street, and putting it down, or even if I'm not picking it up, I'm sitting in one place, but I have something in my pocket, and I get up, that's also called Akira, I uprooted the object from its place, then I walk outside, and then I stop, means I did I nocha, because I stopped, I completed the malacha. Then you transgress according to the tailor. Even if you don't do the complete the malacha, it's still prohibited. Rabbinically, you can't do either one. In other words, if let's say a person is going to, if I say, I mean, it's obvious, but because you already know you're not going to do it, but now you see it clear. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk outside and I'm going to have something in my pocket and I'm not going to stop. I'll continue walking and then come back. So what, what did I transgress? I didn't transgress biblically. I didn't complete the law. I didn't put it down. But I did do, I did do an Akita because I had it in my pocket. Or I picked it up. And when I got up, or even if I'm standing in one place, as long as my pocket, and I stopped walking, I did Akira. I uprooted it from this place, and I went outside. So I did part of the Malacha. So, or if you just do Hanacha, let's say, if, um, if let's say, if let's say I walk, if someone is outside and there's another Jew that, you, if, if let's say someone is walking outside and he's carrying something, right? And the other person, the other person, while this person is walking with the object and carrying it, another Jew comes and takes it from his hand and puts it down. So the other Jew did not know her. He put it down. He, he did part of the Ruach. So either one is privileged. Okay, so now, now let's, now you have a basic understanding. Now I'll explain you what you do and you'll understand why some of you say it like this, why some of like that. Okay, so now you're walking outside and while you're walking, you realize you have something in your pocket. Okay, so you don't stop. What do you do? So it is very simple. Since you left your house, what did you do? Did you stop at all? If you say, since you left your house, you haven't stopped at all. There's no red lights, there's no, you know, it didn't come to any, didn't come to, you know, usually, usually come to a corner, you have to wait till the light. Mm -hmm. and you stop, oh, so you stop. Since you left your house, you never stopped, okay? We're not discussing now, now you're walking. Of course you're walking. By the way, if you realize what, when you stop, let's say you're walking and you stopped and you're waiting by the corner, and while you're in one place, you realize you're carrying something. So what do you do? You keep walking home. Again, you're walking, 
And then you come to the traffic light, and you stop, you're waiting for the lights. And while you're standing, uh, so you put it away. So what do you do? Put it away. There's no problem. I mean, there's a problem. I mean, it's not, I mean you just take it out of your pocket and put it down. Once you're in one place, you just empty your pocket. There's no question. Because mm -hmm. you already completed the malacha. You already stopped. Just take it. No question. The whole the conversation is you realize why you're walking. You never stop. If you realize why you're walking, the first thing is you never stop. Yeah. So let's say that you, you realize why you're walking, you haven't stopped. So you you find you find a way, you know, you you use side streets where, where you know you can you don't have to stop to wait for the cars, you know. But let's say that someone lives um across the street. Let's let's let me finish first life. finish explaining, then we'll take the question. I want to clarify something. So we're discussing now you're walking and you haven't stopped. Now I want to make it very clear, isn't you haven't stopped? Of course you realize why you're walking, because if you realize when you stop, when I say you haven't stopped means that of course you're still walking, but since you left your house, you also didn't stop. So besides this, that you're walking and you realize you're carrying, since you left your house, you never stopped even once. That's what we're discussing now. As opposed to I realize while I'm walking, I okay, then see. I did, stop, I did stop once before. It was a light before, and I did stop already. Okay, so we're discussing now when you're walking, but you haven't stopped. Meaning, of course, you're walking and I didn't stop. But you also, you never stop since you left your house. You've been walking the whole time. You never stopped even once. That's what we're discussing now. In such a situation, what we're saying, we're going to tell you is to continue walking and walk back to where you came from. So there's two aspects over here. We don't want you to put it down. If we're going to tell you, let's say, okay, so take the object while you're walking and just throw it down. Then you complete the malachan. You complete the act of carrying. Because what's the definition of carrying? You pick a kid, you pick it up in one place, and then you put it down. If while you're walking, you're going to take your cap, now you're going to carry it, put it down. Now, 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 you did, now you completed the act of carrying. Because you picked it up in the private domain, put it down the public domain. Public domain. So you don't want to put it down because then you can complete, complete the act. So there's two things over there. I said, we're going to tell you to go back to where you came from. So there's two parts of it. One part is that we're telling you don't put it down. Just continue walking. Go back to a go to a, a private domain and put it down there. Then you have not completed the work because you picked something up in a private domain and you're putting it back down in a private domain. Within that halacha of telling you to go to private domain, what we're telling you is the better private domain to go to is the one that you came from. So if you have an option, okay, I'm ready, I'm going to show it. I'll, I'll put it down a private domain. I'm going, I'm going to show it. It's also private domain. I'll put it down there. We're telling you better is to put it down the private domain. We better to go back to where you came from. Because the Chum don't want that anything should be accomplished from the malacha. The malachim becomes far worse in a more strict, more harsher category when you accomplish something by doing something as opposed to nothing was accomplished. So if we tell you to go back to where you came from, so now you have, nothing was transferred as opposed to when you're coming to, going to show, even though you have not completed the malachim, but now something was accomplished with what you did. There's something that you did rabbinically, rabbinically was still prohibited. We don't want anything to be accomplishment. So preferably, we want you to go back to where you came from. If it's too difficult, it's too far, it's freezing, whatever. So there's some leeway to tell you, okay, just continue walking to show. But you have to make sure it gets a little tricky because you're coming to another private domain. Many times before you enter a private domain, you have to stop in a public domain. Certain houses certain streets over here, um, depending where, you know, where you know, some like this Montgomery, you have houses between Albany and Troy that are walking apartments, you know, street level. And before you come to the door, that may be considered like a, like a public domain. Mm -hmm. So you can't necessarily just walk into the private domain. If some private domains, before you walk to the private domain, you have to stop. So now you stop in the public domain. So you really have to know where you're going to. If the plan out accordingly, or if you're going to have that problem with your own house, 
that before you enter your house, you must stop in the problem of men because you can't, you have to take out the key, whatever. So then you have a problem. Then you have to find another private domain. We could just walk right in. Okay, you want to ask, you want to ask a question? Um, yes, so let's say that, uh, let's say, just, just wondering, um, if, let's say that, uh, I don't know, so I leave my house, I don't realize that I have something in my pockets, but I'm walking, I'm walking, and I run, if I live on Eastern Parkway, I run to make the light across Eastern Parkway, so I don't check if we stop at the light, right? And I realized once I cross Eastern Parkway, I'm part of the river. Did you stop at the light? You no, you didn't. No, okay. I didn't. I didn't stop at the light because okay. say the walk sign was, was right. Gone, so I could right. just walk across the street. And I realized when I'm partway to wherever I'm going, that I have something in my pocket. In order to get back to where I live, I would have to cross Eastern Parkway. If I go back to Eastern Parkway without stopping, and the light is red, could I just pace back and forth until it turns so that I haven't technically? Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah, 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 for sure. That's. That's something that's recommended all the time. If you don't want to, you want to make sure you're not going to stop. Or still try what to do. You just pace back and forth. You're just still walking. Absolutely. Okay. It's not just. It doesn't have to be walking as a purpose. You you're walking. You haven't stopped. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Now, if you realize that now this is the case where you realize you're carrying, but since you left your house, you haven't stopped. Now, what's if you realize you're carrying, but since you left the house where you came from. You already stopped. You stopped by, 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 the, by the crosswalk, and then you continued walking. And now, while you're walking, you realize that you're carrying. So what do you do? So now, does it make sense to go back where you came from? You're going to go back to where you came from, you're going to be completing the walk. Because what happened when you stopped and continued walking? When you stop with the light, and then you continue walking, it's like you completed the walk when you stopped. And then you did a new Akira, you, know, you uprooted the object again. So now you lifted it up again in the public domain. Now what do you want to do? Go back to the house and put it down in the private domain. See, so completing the Malachim. What's the point? You get it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what should you do? Put it down in the public domain, right? You're also transgressing. You now will transfer four cubes to the public domain. So whatever you do, The only thing is to totally out of it, which not to do, is to continue walking until after the shop is over. But no, no, we're not we're not gonna make you do that. How about if you're if it's like an hour left of Shabbos, then that's a grills or maybe less. If it's realistic, that's the best thing to do. But the Ham don't impose that on us because they don't impose things that's too hard for us. So in this situation, you have to complete the lacha, whether it's by putting it down, just putting it down in the public domain. So you carried four cubes of public domain. If you go back to the private to, to the private domain, you completing the lacha, putting down the private domain. Whichever way you do it, you are completing the lacha. Get it? Well, I'm not finished yet. Let me finish explaining. You get it so far? Whatever you do. So so what so what should you do? What's the better option? Okay. <laughs> to, to, huh? Yeah. But if you it's okay. everything was machine, you know, it was machine, yeah. But right now you realize you're carrying. So now you know that you're carrying. You're aware. The better option is to throw it away because you don't need to get from from like how me me Rashid Pradik No, so the other option to go back home. It's probably better no. to benefit from it, right? Like to take the option that you're not benefiting from. Because right, but and, and what and therefore what? To throw out to throw it out, like not to bring to it out. Right, right. So okay, so there's also another point, other point. The point of Gintur is like not to get from Rashuta Hedda. What about a Carmelut? Back to Rashuta Hedda. One second, one second. If you bring it back well, to What are you suggesting that we do what? I think to go back home because then you. But then you're completing the Malacha. You already stopped. When you realize that you're carrying, you already stopped before. So it means you stop, you start walking again. It means you completed, you started the Malacha again. Now you're going to go back to your house, you're going to put it down. You have completed the malacha. So you're not gaining anything by going back to your house. You're going to be co completing the malacha. Now, on the other hand, if you put it down in the public domain, you're also completing the malacha, right? Mm -hmm. Whichever way. So what's the best choice? So you mentioned put it down so you don't benefit, right? Then there's another aspect. You want to minimize in the transgression. Right now you're carrying. 
What's the point of carrying, 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 and bring the flow of the lake to the crowd of the lake? You might as well just get rid of it as soon as possible. You're going to be completing the moch anyways. So you want to minimize the amount of time that you're involved with carrying. So the idea is you want to drop it out of your hand as soon as possible. Is that? Okay. Rabbi, if it's not a, val if it's not a valuable object, you're, you can just empty your pockets out without touching the item. That way you're not actually transporting it from your person to the public domain. But then what about... Um, well, that, you said you said that if it's not a valuable object, you could just turn it up, turn your pockets upside down. You're still emptying it out. You're still putting it down. Yeah, but you're not touching it. It's that you're doing it awkwardly. Okay, so you're doing it awkwardly. So when, so there's two ways to do it awkwardly. Either you could pick it up like this and throw it behind. The idea is to do it not in a regular way. We want to minimize transgression. When you do something not in a regular way, you minimize transgression. So while you're walking, you pull it out of your pocket and you throw it behind the bed. That's one way. We're having a suggestion that you could just take the pocket and turn it upside down. And that's also not in a regular way. Uh, I Can don't you know explain why. the concept of a karmic why, why, why is that better than just throwing it, taking it, throwing it behind your back? Turning it, turning, emptying your pockets. What are you saying? Then you're not your even touching it. Because you're touching it or not. Well, you're like that's that's purposefully grabbing something. In a way. I hear what you're saying. I'm not sure if that's considered not on the regular. You're, you're turning it upside down. How do people empty pockets? By turning it upside down. Uh, generally, the way it's brought down, and it could be what you're saying is brought somewhere. I haven't seen it. Generally, it's brought down to put it down in a non regular way. Turning your pockets upside down is a regular way how people empty pockets. Um, not really the regular way you usually stick your hand into your pockets. You're saying to hold to the pocket from the bottom and turn it over, yeah, right? Like, or you know, you can like reach inside your coat pocket and just push the stuff out. That would be an awkward way to empty your pocket. Yeah, it's not really the, generally the regular way. What's considered uh, uh, usually what's called the irregular way is when you throw it in a backhand way. You throw it behind your back. I haven't seen that. I have to look into it and see if there's such a way. Can you explain the concept of a car? Is it Carmelut? Uh, it's like the neutral yeah, public. A rabbinic, a rabbinic public domain. Yeah. So, but, but we're discussing in general, whether it's a Carmelist or Shosharabim, whether I'm saying you could put it down in a rabbinically um, appropriate public domain. It says it's a Carmelist. In a public domain, you still can't do what you want. It's more lenient, but you still can't put it down in a regular way. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so where I live, I live in like a basement apartment of someone's house, but you have to go in the house to get there. When I'm leaving, I have to stop and lock the outside door that leads from the house to the outside. Would that be stopping or would it? If you have to stop to lock the door, that's called stopping. No, but does it count that like you're leaving because- But, but what's the question? Like what, what's going is on? It, is it, is basically is like the house considered a public domain? Or is it the house is a like, private is it my specific apartment that is where the like the start point of yes, and where does the public domain begin? Kind of, because there's multiple people in the house. It's like kind of like an apartment building. Uh, you're you're trying house. to figure out what's the definition of public domain and private domain? Is that your question? No, I'm saying I'm, I'm like, just when trying when to say what you asked. Like when I'm leaving my apartment, which is inside someone's house, is that the start reading point of like, if I happen to be carrying something, I can't stop? Or is it once I leave the actual house itself? Actual house itself. No, it's when you walk out of your, your apartment building, right? Mm -hmm. You walk out of the apartment, you're still in the private domain. Okay. That's called a private domain. You are a lot of about carrying an uh, apartment building, but that's not what we're discussing now. We're Isn't talking about- uh, pet talk? Look, when we talk about a public domain, we mean outside of the street, not in the hallway of your apartment building. That's what you're asking, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so let's explain a little more, and then we'll see if there's more questions. So 
What we're saying is, if you already stopped since you since you left Yaf, you already stopped once. So you're going to throw it out, not in a regular way. So like this, the idea is you're minimizing transgression. What's the point of walking and carrying something? Anyway, it's going to complete the malacha, but throw it out, not in a regular way. So I think the, the next issue, next discussion is what about if it's something that's expensive and you want to hold on to it? You don't want to throw it down. So what do you do? So theoretically, oh, there's another thing also. Oh. So theoretically speaking, if you could find a non-Jew that you're comfortable with and you trust, so while you're walking, again, this doesn't, uh, I mean, it's just Allah, for the sake of saying Allah, I don't think it's practical. While you're walking and you're holding it, you have a brain that you trust, you can ask him to take it from you. Don't put it into his hand, because then you can clean the malacha, right? If you're walking in the street and you carry, and then you put it into someone's hand, and you can clean it, you put it down. Just call it down. So you have to have the guy take it from your hand while you're walking. Not practical, but it's something that you could do. Otherwise, you, like we said, step one is you drop it in a backhanded way. It's on the floor. Now, you could stand. It's expensive. You don't want to lose it. Okay, so stand and watch it. Oh. Is it practical? No, but we have to go through all the steps. Step one is it's expensive, right? You're supposed to drop it out of your hand. There's no guy around. Okay, you dropped it out of the hand. Now watch it. You can go to and watch it. You can't. It's freezing. It's not safe. Da, 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 whatever. So then, if it's expensive, um, what you could do is, if it's not mukta, you could, what did we say? You could pass it from one hand to the other hand. If you have another person with you, you could pass it from one person to the next. Then you complete the malacha. No, if I pass it, if you have two people pass it to each other, there's two people, two people standing, right? Right? Two people right here. And this person passes this to him. And then this person goes here. And then this person passes it to him. And then this person, you keep on, right? You go one, keep on going like that. Like you stop every time you pass it. The prohibition of carrying a pole of the lanes, you carry six feet at a time. It's four cubits. But it's about from here, three, four, five, six. It's a little longer than the table, okay? It's like a foot longer than the table. But if, if I give it to someone, then that person gives it to me. And that person gives it, keep on going like that, then each one carried less than four cubits. So now you're not transgressing jobs. So that's 100% okay. So you just play hot potato. Huh? Yeah. You're basically playing potato. hot potato with an item. Yeah. Okay, but you're allowed to do that. Now, it doesn't solve the issue. How do you get it into the private domain? To get it from the public to the private. So either you have a non Jew do it. The best thing is to have a non Jew do it. We're talking about something that's very expensive. Oh, a because, key for example. huh? Oh, key for example. We're talking about the general idea now. A key, uh, a key, who's a, a key you could hide somewhere, it depends. A key is a, depends on the situation. You carry a key in your pocket. Yeah, on Shabbat it actually what, and we just throw it away. So, so it depends on the specific situation. A key is not an expensive, a key is not expensive. Like it's uh, something that you need. Like my friend had a key for the library. So you're going into examples, it's hard to say for sure because the keys aren't expensive. So you maybe there's another copy of the key. So if you lose the key, you get another key. Just don't put your address on the key. Okay? <laughs> right? Key is not expensive. So it's we're talking about the general picture. Let's say it's an expense. So there's a leniency to ask a non-Jew to carry for you. When it's a rabbinic, now you mentioned about the karmas, a rabbinic public domain. Assuming it's a rabbinic public domain, rabbinic public domain, you can ask a non Jew to carry for you from in the street into your private house because it's something that's expensive. And now, if you don't have a non Jew and it's expensive, so there's a way how to do it. Uh, you could do it not in a regular way. Oh, one second, could it? Uh, one second, no. If there's no, you can't do it yourself. If it's a big expense, oh, so there is actually a lenient opinion. If it's, is everyone following so far or it's it's coming too much now? You get it? You're following no, what's happening? 
What? Are you following? Yeah. What? Confused about what? Which part? We're discussing it's it's very expensive. And you have to try. Never, never mind. Something that I, I want to keep. I don't want to lose it. Okay. For example, I'm just saying. Okay. If it's something that you don't want to lose, it goes into the carriage and it's expensive. It's it's valuable to yeah, you. It's yeah. valuable. Fine. You gave a key, and the key is is hard to say. Yeah, something that's valuable. What if your key has like your address on it? You want somebody to go rob you. Yeah. Why does your key have your address on it? You never put your address on a key. Some people <laughs> you should never, you should never, it's the dumbest thing to do, you know? Let's say you've I'm sorry, you, you, uh, let's say someone is standing on his head. It, 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 you don't put, you don't write a key, you don't, you don't write your address on a key. You okay. never do such a thing. It's, it's okay. the most irresponsible thing a person could do is put his address on his key. Like, uh, no, sometimes you get a key from like the, I don't know, like you first get an apartment and it has like a tag with the address on it. Oh, you the know? first getting, okay, so it's a hypothetical case. Okay, so then it goes to the category of a loss. Then it's a valuable object that you don't want to lose. You don't want anyone to find it. Yeah. Okay, so fine. So then there's a leniency to have a non Jew carry it for you. Okay. Um, if I don't have non-Jew, huh? if I don't have non-Jew, if you don't have a non-Jew, so then we said this: you pass it from one person to the next. I'm gonna have to ask. What if you only have one person? What if you only have one person? So then you could carry it yourself four cubits. Oops, sorry, you could carry it for less than four cubits and stop. Put right. it down, right? And then walk, pick it up again. Walk, walk for less than four cubits. You stay here so you can see what's going on. You walk for less than four cubits, and then you stop. Mm -hmm. You walk, then you stop. Now that is not permitted the chatzila. That is very bedieva. That's like that's not something that you can usually do. But you don't. We only allow. No, you, you you carry for less than four cubits, and you stop. But wait, we spoke that we're not allowed to stop. If we stop, it's a problem. Why is it a problem? Because you complete the malacha. So you complete the malacha. When, the when you complete the malacha, you carry part of the name. If After you're not even dollars, I'm going to You're carrying four cubits in the part of the name. But you're carrying less than four cubits. You're carrying two cubits. <laughs> Yeah, but four yeah, but cubits. Well, the prohibition of carrying a part of domain is when you're carrying four cubits. That means six feet. It means you picked it up in the street and you walk six cubits and then you stopped. Four but if you walk where? four cubits is about what? four cubits where? In the part of domain. There's a separate prohibition that you can't carry in a part of domain. So you lift something up in a part of domain and you walk four cubits and stop. You transgress, but if you walk less than four cubits, you have not transgressed because you carry less. So if I pick it up and I walk and then I stop, I didn't transgress. So that's something you could do if you don't have two people. Then why do you need two people? Why don't you just do it yourself? Walk less than four cubits, stop. Stop. Why do we say so? I need two people for. <coughs> Anyone remembers this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, accidentally, you could accidentally continue to carry. Chacham, our sages don't allow this in a regular situation. They don't allow you to do such a thing to do on your own. Because you might, by mistake, not realize and walk more. Doing it with another person, so you're passing. The nature is that you are two feet away from another person. So they don't usually allow you to do it on your own. Get it? Okay. In a situation where it's a loss, it's very valuable, and you don't have two people to do it with, so it's a loss. So, again, well, let's back up just for a moment. You're supposed to stand and watch it. That's really the ideal thing. What's the problem? It's expensive. So stand and watch it. Get someone else to watch it for you. If the person can't, it's freezing, it's, it's dangerous, huh? If it's Shabbos morning, what, I'm going to stand in with the Shabbos? So I'm saying it's not maybe you could, I don't know. We're saying what is the ideal situation? What is the chathila? If it doesn't work, you can't, you can't get anyone. It's very difficult. Many variables, yeah. You should you have to set it up this way, you have to stand and watch it. 
if you can't, for whatever reason, it's extremely difficult, then we're allowing you, number one is to ask a guy, ask a nanju. If you have no nanju, then you pass it, then you could do it on your own. You walk less than four cubits. But then, when you get to the front of the house, it doesn't help to bring it into the private domain, less than four cubits, because you transfer from one domain to another domain. So there, step no, step one is you can have a non-Jew. If not, and we're talking about that, it's still going to be a big loss. It could be, there's so many variables. It could be once you're front of the house, it's safe already, because that's so to stand in what if it's if it's going to be a loss, if you knew it's going to get stolen and it's a valuable object, so then we allow you to bring it inside the private domain, not in a regular way. In other words, or actually, no, here's what you do. You do it with two people together. In other words, you do it together. You, 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 first of all, you, 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 carry, you try to stick your hand inside, not in a regular way. And then someone else takes it from you. So you're not doing the complete malach, you're doing it together with someone else. So you're com- doing the malach together with someone else. Or a better way, a better way, no, actually a better way would be to do it, to actually bring it in on your own, but not in a regular way, to throw it like backwards. Yeah. One second, but this is only important I have to tell you. It's only if it's a rabbinical public domain. You mentioned about uh, Carmelis, right? You mentioned there's a... Right? So yeah. if it's Carmelis, a rabbinical public domain, only then will we allow you to throw it inside, not in a regular way. I'm going like let's say 10 steps. I can still throw it back to the house if I stop. I stop, I get oh my gosh, I have my uh, makeup on me, okay, like a lipstick, very expensive lipstick. Okay, I want to put it back and not walk with it. So I allow to throw it like this back home. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, you have to ask your non-Jew to do it. it. But if I don't have non-Jew, I live in Israel, we don't have so many non-Jews, what I do? Um, giving an example, okay, it's a theoretical example, lipstick is so expensive, okay, let's say something, it's, let's say, let's say it's very expensive and you're going to lose it, right? So, um, so then if it's a rabbinical public domain and there's no non-Jews around, how do I like know it? Right. New, Brooklyn is more of a problem. You don't, you're right. You don't. Brooklyn Brooklyn is more complicated. Brooklyn could be a, a, a also, I mean, I'll tell you it's that. so much of a problem. Why didn't do it when it's uh, you? You're going from one problem to the next. It's hard to, to deal with all these questions no. at once. You know? <laughs> because it's like so complicated. But Can I say it, something inappropriate? That you could throw not in a regular way. Yeah, but but it's theoretically speaking, if it's, if it's very expensive and there's no non-Jew, so then you could throw it backhanded way in, back into the house. You could. Again, it has to be something that's a big loss. It can't just be something. You're giving an example that doesn't sound real. You're giving an example of lipstick doesn't sound real. So, lipstick costs one hundred dollars. Costs hundred dollars? Yes, but it's not expensive. I don't know. If that's what it costs. Okay, that's a big... By the way, the definition of expense goes according to the person. So let's say someone is a very rich, $100 is not a loss. But for a regular person, $100 is a loss. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that could be considered a big loss. Okay. And the other question, um, I, I forgot what you told us about the club. Are you allowed to put on charge of club? You could be lenient. Now, Trevor says it's better to be strict. That was again? Yeah, he says it's better to be strict, but now, Trevor says the meaning is that people are lenient, and whoever wants to be lenient could be lenient, but it's it's preferable. It's preferable not to wear gloves, I but it's not us. Awesome. It's allowed. But it's, it's, allowed. Not. it's allowed, but it's not. And scarf? A scarf? A scarf is a garment. Garment? Yeah. And if I put it on my head, it means. So what? It's a garment. Yeah. 
That's how some people wear it. I mean, around like this. Yes, like if I do like what And why are you doing it like that to keep you warm? So anything that's to keep you warm becomes a garment. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. You want to ask something? Yeah. Um, this is like a kind of a, I would be not politically correct in today's world, but technically isn't the halakha that if you, if you're out carrying and you say it's an expensive object or something you can't drop and there isn't a goy around, you can give it to a child under the age of three to carry or a deaf, mute, or mentally impaired person that would not have the knowledge to understand the halakha or if you had like say a dog your dog following you not on a leash it's not so you're... simple it's not so simple it, it's, it's a little more complicated if you realize there are situations where you end up being stuck in a situation where we allow you sometimes to have a, a child under a certain age to carry for you but it's not it's not it's so not... simple you have yeah. to you have, I, I need specific details what the case is to answer that question. It was more like if you have um, someone with you that's mentally, cognitively compromised and they don't have the dot, they don't have the wisdom of what the halakha would be, they are considered to be um, in, incompetent to understanding what what they're doing, let's say, Okay. Right. They technically would be not held to the same um, standard of transgressing as someone that has the knowledge of it. Isn't that true? You they see, could theoretically take an object from you like a goy would yes. and carry yes. because they don't know. In other words, it would be better to use them than to use than to use a non you saying? Well, I mean, no, non-Jew would be preferable because no. you wouldn't no. want to have a Jewish person transgress even without their knowledge. But so you're saying if there's no non-Jew, you can use someone like that. Yes, theoretically. Yeah, yeah, yeah such a thing. That there's that concept. Right. But using a child is not so simple. It depends. There are situations that you could ask, but generally speaking, you cannot. And what we're yeah. discussing now, when you realize you're carrying on Shabbos, we don't, there's no need here of asking a child. There is in situations where something happened before Shabbos, there's more details involved where we allow uh, uh, you doing through a child. But generally, what we're discussing now, when you realize you're carrying a Shabbos, we don't yeah. have a child carrying for us. And, and someone who's like mentally handicapped in some way, you would have to help them to not transgress. You're saying if, there's not. No, if there's no non jew you want to use them instead? Yeah, I mean, not purposefully trying to use them, but, you know, say you happen to have a child that has a condition and you happen to find yourself carrying, you could indicate to them, hey, could you hold on to this? And they would carry it for you and they would not have any knowledge of what they're doing. I have to look into it. It's not so simple because that that is... Bottom line is, if they're, they're still Jewish, so um, yeah. we don't. There is a situation where we use them, but so you're talking specifically. I, I need very specific details to answer this question. What exactly is the case? You realize you're carrying a Shabbos, and it's something right, that's say, you realize that you're carrying out of your a Shabbos. Yeah, so say you have a, a sibling who's um, cognitively impaired in some way, have they have a dis disability, and you realize you're carrying, and you say, hey, can you take this thing out of my pocket for me? And they go, sure, because they, they don't but know, they don't have the ability. Just because, just because they, have a, they have a cognitive disability doesn't mean they're in the category of what halacha calls a, 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 a there's a concept in, a, in a halacha where someone is a shayt, an imbecile, which means something... That's that's what I was trying to think not of. Not necessarily yeah. in that category, just because it's very okay. hard to determine what category he's in. And even if he is, we're discussing here that if it's a big loss, you can do it through a non-Jew. It doesn't yeah. okay. it, That leads him doing it through a Jewish person, whether it's a child or a, 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 someone in that category, that's not discussed of it. That is sometimes used as a leniency in other situations, but not, not when we're discussing here when you realize... Okay. Oh, 
job is that you're carrying? I was just curious about it because I, yeah, I, I volunteer with them. Um, I work with organizations that work with um, children uh, with learning disabilities. So I'm curious right? about how the holistic leniencies apply around that. If you're working with people who are not able to fully comprehend, uh, it's, it's, it's a topic in itself. Don't have to go into it. It's not they're not necessarily in that category. But maybe in yeah. another case we could get to it. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying about how, how to judge a person's level of comprehension or like right. what you're saying, the rule about the imbecile is kind of a right. um, difficulty to determine one. Right. Okay, we to show tomorrow. We'll continue. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks for letting me jump in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, be well. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. All right, still on this. All right.